most sophisticated procedure we do for paralyzed faces when the muscles are non-functional is to transfer or transplant muscle, commonly the gracilis muscle, to the face. And then we tease those muscles into small, small pieces of muscle to replicate the function of a normal facial muscle. That technique requires that the muscle comes together with a nerve and a blood vessel. To keep the muscle alive, we have to connect a new blood vessel to feed the new muscle. And then we have to connect a new nerve to feed it, allow the muscle to move. In some patients, we do a simpler procedure con called the temporalis tendon transfer procedure. The temporalis muscle is a muscle that is on the side of the head. It attaches to your jawbone and it allows you to chew or grind your teeth. But there are other muscles in the body that does the same thing. So we can repurpose that muscle. We detach the temporalis tendon from the jawbone and then attach it to the corner of the mouth and teach this muscle to create a smile or support the paralyzed face. The advantage of this uh, technique is that it's a very straightforward procedure. It takes about two hours. You see the results right away. There are some times that we prefer to do the more sophisticated uh, surgery, which is the gracilis transfer. Because with the gracilis, it's versatile. We can change the vector of smile. We can actually create a full smile. The ten temporalized tendon has some limitations, but it's a quick procedure. That is usually the best choice for someone who is looking for something quick, one-step surgery. So at Johns Hopkins, we actually have been very innovative and pioneered new techniques as to facial reanimation in general. One specific way we've made a big difference is the use of gracilis muscle. Gracilis muscle is a transfer for facial paralysis. It's not a new surgery, but it wasn't so popular because the muscle, uh, the gracilis muscle is a big muscle. And when you put it in the face, it tends to create bulk. In addition, it's a one vector muscle. It's just one strip of muscle, and it just moves the corner of the mouth. It gives you a smile like the Mona Lisa. We call it the Mona Lisa smile. So when you smile, you don't tend to see teeth. At Hopkins, we want a, a, a full smile, a smile that lifts the lip, shows the teeth, makes the eyelids squint. That's a joyful smile. To do so, you have to actually try to replace all the natural muscles that naturally move the face. And with that, we take the gracilis muscle and we're able to tease it into multiple fascicles of muscle that move in various directions, two directions, three directions, even adding a portion of it that allows you to blink. And with that, we call it a multi-vector gracilis muscle pioneered here. And with that, we can create in a, a reproducible way a full smile that looks more natural. Single stage versus a two stage procedure. Um, usually, the elements that is required to really get a good uh, smile or uh, correction of paralysis is a muscle that moves and a nerve that can move that muscle in a powerful way. Whenever we want to use a cross facial nerve graft, a cross facial nerve graft meaning recruiting nerves from the normal side, we tend to allow that nerve to grow across the face. It takes about six months to nine months to grow across the face, and that usually is the first stage procedure. Once we've known that the nerve has grown all the way to the paralyzed face, then we do a second procedure, a second stage procedure. That's the point when we move the muscle to the face. The reason for that is you never want a muscle to sit in the face without a nerve talking to it. The muscle slowly tries to die away before the nerve grows into it. So that's when we do two stage procedures. But we have also found that whenever we do uh, that surgery, we can actually do it as a single stage procedure as long as we connect two separate nerves. A nerve that is on the paralyzed side of the face already, meaning it takes a shorter time to grow into the muscle and it acts like a babysitter. It keeps the muscle alive, it keeps it ready so that when the cross facial that is taking its time, six months, nine months to get in, by the time it comes in, the muscle is alive and ready to go. Our experience is that when we've done two stage procedure, one stage procedure, after a year, we can't tell the difference. But we make a clinical decision who we offer a single stage procedure to and a two stage procedure to.
if your paralysis has been there for a very long time, your muscles, the muscles are gone. In those cases, we have to transfer a muscle. The eyelid muscles are the smallest muscles in the face. There is no other muscle in the body that really replaces it very well. But one of the things that we've pioneered here at Hopkins are transferring tiny little muscles, a muscle called omohyoid, muscles, platysma muscles. These are thin muscles that we can thin them to this thickness of just about a paper, and we can use it to replace the eyelid muscle to restore blink.